Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Ralf Spenneberg. I work for the Open Source Security game behind Steinfurt, Germany. We are a long-term partner of Tribe29. In addition to the product itself, we are offering trainings, consulting and support for Check and K. This video will show the configuration of the backup and the update of the Check and K appliance. A different video already explained the initial setup of the appliance. We will cover in detail backing up the appliance, update of the firmware, and update of the chicken case software. If this introduction is too long or you need specific infos, just jump to the appropriate chapter. If you think this video is informative and you like it, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. This really helps the video and will make sure that YouTube promotes this video to other users as well. Thank you very much. Using the web interface, you can configure a scheduled full backup of the appliance, including all sites. The firmware itself is not part of the backup, only the configuration the contents of the sites is contained in the backup. To restore the backup, you need an empty appliance, preferably running the same firmware. Running backups or storing backups on the appliance itself is not recommended, so before configuring backups, we should mount external file systems. So to do that, we need to manage mounts first. So enter the web configuration and go to Manage Mounts. To start the backup on an external directory, we need to mount it. So let's add a new mount to our appliance. Uh, here I will use NFS, uh, otherwise you could use SIFS or SSHFS. For simplicity, I will use NFS here. So let's give the mount a unique name. Let's call it server. Um, let's enter the host address and the path and this will make sure that the directory is only mounted if it's accessed and it will be unmounted on an activity which is recommended for nfs let's do a save and here we see our mount uh, currently it's not mounted because it's not in use but we will see that it will be mounted later on now to configure the backup, we have to first configure a backup target. That's the location where the backup should be stored. For that, we need to remember the mount point of our uh, external directory. So let's copy that. Let's go back to the main menu and let's go to the device backup and the backup targets. Let's create a new backup target and the directory that the backup should be saved to is MNT auto server. That's the directory we mounted from the external server. So let's give it a unique ID. I will choose the same one and a title. And let's save that. This makes sure that this is a mount point and uh, that the chicken K appliance makes sure that this directory actually is mounted before storing a backup here. If you get such, a, um, such an error message when saving, um, you need to make sure that the target directory actually is writable by the uh, chicken K appliance. If you've made sure that the directory is writable, you should be able to save it. And we see that the server de uh, backup directory is now configured. Let's go back to our backups. Now, if you want to encrypt our backups, we can configure backup keys. Encrypting the backups is recommended if the backups are stored in an unprotected uh, space because the backups contain chicken K configuration and possibly even login data, login credentials for different machines that should be checked by chicken K. Therefore, the encryption of the backup is recommended. So let's create backup keys. Let's create a key. We have to specify a comment and a passphrase. Important, the passphrase is required whenever you want to restore the backup. It's not required to create the backups. So for restoration, we need the passphrase. Creating the backups is done without the passphrase. If your appliance should break at some point, um, you don't only need the passphrase, but you need the keys as well. So therefore it's recommended to download the keys here and store them in a secure location. And then you can 
upload the keys to the new appliance later on in case your appliance should be totally destroyed. Um, now we can create a backup job. To create a new job, click on new job, give it an ID, a title, choose the backup target, choose the schedule, maybe every week, Monday morning. Here you can choose whether you want to compress the backup, which is again recommended. This can save a lot of disk space and whether we want to choose to encrypt the backup. Save that and now you can manually start this backup or wait for the backup to run automatically. Let me start the backup manually so we'll see how this works actually. So the backup is started. This takes a few seconds. We can reload this page and see that the backup has already run for 13 seconds and we has written about eight megabytes per second. Once the backup is finished, you see the size of the backup and the speed of the backup and uh, let's go back maybe to our mounts here we see that the mount is currently mounted because it, it has just been accessed it will be unmounted within the next five minutes because of the inactivity um, if you want to restore the backup you go to restore you choose your target and then you choose the backup which has been uh, placed here and you can restore and need to specify the passphrase if you encrypted the backup before. Creating backups is recommended of course in operation anyway and very importantly of course before you update the firmware or before you update your chicken k version make sure that you have the current backup of your system because although updating the appliance is very straightforward strange things may happen and a backup make sure that you can um, repair your appliance in case something goes wrong you can update the firmware of the appliance without data loss Nevertheless, you will need a maintenance window because all sites must be stopped first and the appliance must be booted to apply the firmware update. In the following few minutes, I will show you the process of updating the firmware from version 1.5.2 to version 1.5.3. First, we need to download the current firmware version. So to do that, navigate to the Chicken homepage, click the download button, choose the Chicken K appliance and the current version, update appliance, and then scroll down and download the current appliance firmware file. Uh, this file has got the extension CFW. Once you have downloaded the firmware file, navigate to your Check and K appliance. There, go to your site management and stop all running sites. The sites must be stopped for the firmware to be applied. Once the sites are stopped, go back to the main menu and choose firmware update. Here you see the current firmware version, which is installed on the system, and we can upload and install a new file. So first choose the file and then upload and install. Check and K will check the file after the upload and will tell you what, from what version to what version you will do the update. And if you want to proceed, you just click yes. Now it will take a couple of seconds and Check and K will reboot the appliance. If you monitor your appliance using a physical or a virtual console, you will see the reboot. And during the reboot, a message is displayed that the new firmware will be applied and that you should not power off your device during that. Uh, process. After the application of the update, the appliance will reboot again 
and will boot into the new firmware. You can see the new firmware version on the first console screen. As you can see here, we are now running 153. Once the system has rebooted, you can reload the web page in your browser and you will see that version 153 is installed. This is all that is needed to install new firmware on your appliance. You can also update the chicken K version on your appliance without data loss. Nevertheless, you will need a short maintenance window again because the sites which will be switched to the new version of chicken K need to be stopped first. In the following few minutes, I will show the process of updating the chicken K application from version 200p26 to 210p6. First, log into your Check and K web interface and check for the currently installed Check and K version. Here we see that we've installed the version 200p26. To install the current version, we first need to download that. Navigate to the Check and K homepage, click the download button, and choose the Check and K appliance. Choose Update Check and K and the version you want to download. And here you can download now the current Check and K version for your device. I'm using the free version again. Once you've downloaded the Check and K application, you need to upload and install the file on your Check and K appliance. Click Upload and Install. And after a few seconds, the new Chicken K version is installed in parallel to the currently used Chicken K version. You can have several versions of Chicken K installed at the same time on your appliance, and the different sites running on your appliance can use different versions of Chicken K as well. Once the new Chicken K version is installed, we can go to our sites. Here, the site must be stopped so that we can update the site. This is already stopped. And using this icon, we can update the existing site. This happens without any data loss. We need to choose the target check K version and click Update Now. This takes a couple of seconds. And this green box pretty much means that everything went all right. Uh, you have more detail in here, but if it's green, everything should be fine. So now we can go back to our sites and start the site, which is now running 210p6. Since this is now our only site running on this appliance, and we're only using the version 2.1 now, what we can do is that we can remove the older versions. So once the site is started, we will go to the Chicken K versions again, and we can remove the older version. Um, removal is only possible if no site is using this version anymore. Okay, now we're done. I hope you found this video informative. If you liked it, please leave a th thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. This will help this channel quite a bit. Thank you very much.